Now, this one is just way too exciting. Roll the animation. What's up Glads and welcome back to Gladiators Tennis and looking at the title and the thumbnail of the video you might be like hold on what the fuck is going on but yes I actually got to hit with Daniel Medvedev for the entire week of the Dubai Duty Free ATP 500 event in Dubai and to be more precise I actually got to warm him up before every single match that he played on that event which is absolutely crazy how you might ask well, I will get into more detail on that in one of the future videos because I just have way too much content from that trip that there's no way I'm putting it all in one. But in short, uh, I got to work as one of the hitting partners for both women's and men's week of the tournament, meaning I was just warming up all the top players, sometimes training with them and whatever. So it was Tuesday of the men's week and I was expecting to pretty much have a day off on that day because nobody requested for, for a hitting the day before which is usually how it happens so I went down had my breakfast and then I went back to the hotel room to just chill because the day before that I played with Maxim Cressy and that motherfucker made me surf for like 40 minutes in a row non-stop and my abs were just dying but then I get a text from Kumba who is a friend of mine and also the main organizer of all the ball kids at that event saying that I have to be in the club within the next 30 minutes because Fuck, 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 I was just told that I have Medvedev at 12.30 on center court and it's almost like 12 and I haven't even warmed up and... Uh... Nah, guys, this is insane. Medvedev on center court. What? What? The, the only thing is my abs, they're like this far away from proper tearing. But hey, you know, who cares? Whatever, let's go. So because I sprinted to the club, I actually had enough time to pick up my strong racket from the stringers and do a little warm up. But anyways, it was time to start the warm-up with Daniel, and uh, as you can probably assume, I was a little bit nervous, because even though this wasn't the first time I played on the center court, this was the first time I played Daniel Medvedev, who, you know, just a little bit ago was number one in the world, who's probably gonna become number one pretty soon again, who's an insanely good player and just an awesome guy overall. He actually came from winning Doha last week, beating Andy Murray in an awesome battle, which actually made Andy Murray withdraw from Dubai. Then the week before that, he beat Yannick Sinner in three sets in the final of Rotterdam. So to Dubai, he was coming with an incredible streak of matches won, insane confidence and just an overall really good mood. Ready to take his third title in a row. By the way, Glads, if you found out about my trip to Dubai just now, that means you're not following us on Instagram, where we posted that when the tournament was happening. So feel free to follow us on Instagram. We do post quite a bit of fun content there. Yeah, judging by this little conversation, some of you might have guessed that we are going to be sharing the court with uh, Uber Surkash and Thomas Magic. For those who don't know, Uber's highest ranking at that point was like 9 in the world. And Thomas, even though his highest rank was only like 97, he did do three sets in the first round of this tournament to Novak Joker. So, hey, not a bad player. All of the above meant that my shots have to be super precise and the margin for error is really small. Because, you know, you hit the ball a bit late, playing cross court, the ball flies down the line and kills world number 11. Not something you want to risk, you know. I do have to say that I was pretty close to doing just that several times during the warm-up. In the beginning, I was actually not struggling to keep up with... Uh, Daniel's rhythm whatsoever. The first few rallies I was just thinking, hey, I gotta ask for a wildcard to a challenger or something. But then as we switched sides and I started hearing Matt Grant on every shot he was taking, I started to feel the need to accelerate the tip of my racket way more, stay lower to the ground and move my feet way quicker to time the split steps perfectly. Because as soon as I would screw up the timing, I'd miss the contact point and break the rally. But I did hold up decently well, and after the quick water break, which I noticed Daniel taking quite a few of, it was time to warm up the volleys. And seeing Medvedev play at the net, you might actually think that he sucks. Because, you know, his technique isn't something one's used to seeing. But man, do not be fooled. The guy has great touch and crazy reach, so passing him while he's at the net is almost impossible. Unless you obviously get like a super easy ball to just destroy it.
It was then time for the smashes. For some reason, that tightness that I was feeling due to the slight stress was affecting my lobs more than any other shot. I couldn't throw two similar lobs in a row, literally, but thanks to Daniel's height and the fact that he's a nice guy, it wasn't a problem. Because man, some players, you don't throw a perfect lob and make them move like one meter and they just don't go for it. Not gonna mention names, but yeah, Mad is nice. After he has warmed up his volleys, he told me to go to the net as well and warm up mine. I'm not exactly sure why he wanted me to do that and how it benefits him, but anyways. After opening two new cans of balls, by the way he would do that every time, whenever the ground strokes and volleys warm up was done, he'd open new balls just to warm up the serve and the returns, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, med serve as you can probably guess is insane. The flat bounce is really high, almost like a freaking kick serve, plus it's super fast obviously, and the slide serve just has an insane direction and crazy effect that makes it really hard to control the return in the case that I even get to the ball in the first place, of course. After almost killing Ubi, again, it was time for me to serve. And let's just say I was a bit worried. Not just because tearing my abs meant being out of playing for potentially like one month, but also because the injury could affect my serve performance on the warm-up and Warming up top 10 players serving like 150 per hour isn't gonna cut it. Luckily my abs held up and although I was in a lot of pain, I knew they weren't torn. By the way, isn't it just hilarious how far Daniel returns? You'll actually get a better picture of just how far he returns and how well it works just for him a little further in the video, but for now, look at this funny stats. So yeah, it seemed like the speed of my serve was good enough for his return warm-up, or at least the first serve, but when I started serving second kicks, he was proper destroying the returns. He then did several sides to the deuce side, again, some first serves to the T, a couple of wide serves, some second kicks to the back end, and some second serves to the forehand. Returning my abs got a bit of rest and recovered and I was then ready to serve again. Served decently well and this time put a bit more effort on serving those kicks to challenge him a bit more and also to challenge my abs a bit more. He still did the same patterns for the second serve returns though. He would first return a couple of serves far and then do a few more making a few steps inside the court. So this was the warm up before his first round where he was actually facing a lucky loser from the quali, Matteo Arnaldi. Good opponent for the first round to get used to the courts and not be forced right away. It's an easy match in theory, but either way, in tennis, you should never really relax no matter who you play because absolutely anything can happen. He, of course, took the W either way, even though it was pretty tight in the first few uh, games of the match, and into the second round, he was. Actually here he says, thanks for the warm up and then he adds, you play well. And I was like, damn, thanks, but actually thinking to myself, yeah, if I play well, what the fuck do you do? You know, but uh, you know, it was really nice coming from him. But anyways, after that, I went to do a quick uh, fitness session. Then I had my beautiful dinner. Guys, diet? What diet? How am I supposed to follow a diet? Please, please. How? 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 Went to the sauna, did a five minute ice bath. And yeah, so we're doing a, a nice bath session here. And I put five minutes on the clock. Thorben is out after two. <laughs> we'll see. But it's pretty cold. It's pretty cold, gotta say. Then headed to the player's gym and did a 30 minute recovery session with those 
air pressuring boots. He's taking advantage of everything, man. <laughs> In the evening of that day, Omar, who is the organizer of all the hitters on the event, called me and told me that I'm playing Medvedev tomorrow again. And he said that he specifically asked for that Russian speaking guy, which was kind of nice and exciting. The next morning was quite similar, but this time because I knew I was playing Daniel, I could properly warm up. So yeah, breakfast, this time a walk to the club, another sprint, and the warm up. Warming up for the warm up with Daniel. Uh, gonna play now in like two minutes or so. Uh, exciting once again hopefully get some good footage for you guys and uh, yeah let's continue with my warm-up because because you know my abs are on the edge still of breaking down and then here as well just kind of <laughs> so I'm pretending like it was no big deal, but my abs and my soles were hurting quite a lot. This time we were warming up on court 2, which meant less fancy atmosphere, but who cares, still unbelievable. I got to the court a few minutes in advance, grabbed my water, prepared my freshly strong rackets, and yes, I was restringing every single day because the tension was dropping like crazy in Dubai, even though it wasn't even that hot. But one thing I most definitely forgot to prepare is the grips. I thought they were in decent shape, but as it turns out, they will cause me some trouble later on in practice. So as Daniel arrived to the court, we discussed the balls at the tournament and how they injure all the players. And then he did this. And you're probably wondering, oh, what happened there? Wish we could see it. And I got you glass. It was now time to start rallying, and as you've probably noticed, I got a pretty cool camera for you guys. This first rally lasted like 300 shots, I didn't really know how to make it interesting, so here's a fun trick. I gotta say that on the second training, even though I was still feeling the pressure and obviously still wanted to do my best, I was way more relaxed compared to yesterday and I could feel the ball a little bit more. Might have something to do with the fact that I wasn't sharing the court with two other really really good players, but actually I would say it's mainly because I got to know Daniel a bit more and he turned out to be an absolutely awesome guy. So the atmosphere in court was way more relaxed. But I'll tell you more about Daniel's personality in part 2 of this video. As the intensity of the rallies increases, I start to better notice just how ridiculous, unique and awesome Daniel Stannis is. He has his completely own style and way of playing the game. He's not trying to follow the rules and canons of modern game of tennis and just plays the way he feels right. I feel like his coaches never actually told him what to do and didn't interfere with his formation as a player and I think that's great. I mean, knowing Daniel is probably close to impossible to make him do or change something he doesn't want to, but anyways, the result of whatever happened there is an absolutely unique and unreplicable player on tour who seems to be absolutely crushing through anything that gets in his way. Oh Glads, by the way, if you like Medvedev just like I do and you'd like to buy some of his apparel, for example his incredible shoes that I absolutely love or anything else tennis related, the link is in the description together with our discount code so only use that to buy anything to do with tennis. It helps the channel and it saves you some money, so win-win. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a little carried away, but here notice how Daniel keeps switching rackets? Remind me to tell you why he does that in a bit. But for now, it's break time, and until now my racket has been slipping out of my hand and twisting on every single forehand that I was hitting. So I decided that this would be a great time to change the grip, but the sticky bit that holds the grip in place was just not wanting to come off, so I thought f*** it and decided to just put the overgrip on top of the old one. At this point, I'm like, fuck, I do not have time to put the grip on. It was time for the forehand crosses, and with my wet grip, I thought I would really struggle with that exercise. Yeah. 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 
but actually I did pretty well. This time, as the other half of the chord was free, Daniel started doing some down the line switches every now and then. It pretty much went on like that for a few minutes, just hitting like 4 to 10 shots cross chord and then an aggressive switch down the line whenever it feels right. What I noticed very clearly is that unlike during the matches, he allows himself to do very many unforced errors, whether it's because he doesn't get to the ball properly or because he goes for an unnecessarily aggressive switch, he's fine committing stupid mistakes, doesn't get pissed at himself and just keeps playing. I thought it was kind of interesting because during his matches it's almost impossible to even force him to make a mistake, let alone unforced errors. As we switched to the back ends, I felt quite a bit better, simply because two hands on the grip prevented it from sliding all over the place, and apart from that, I mean, it's back ends, right? Similar thing was happening here, several shots cross court, usually not more than eight, and then he would switch and I would try to go for the ball and kind of play the point as the switch wasn't as aggressive and fast and I could actually get to the ball. Time to warm up the net shot, and again, very unusual a technique that I absolutely love. Looking like you're playing against someone who just picked up the racket for the first time to defend himself from all the balls that are coming at him, even though he can pretty much end the point with every single ball. Oh, by the way, look at what he does when he picks up this ball. Funny. By the way, I'm hitting the ball close to like full power, even though it might not look like it. Time for me to rush to the net and again, this kind of cool angle for you, feeling way better than yesterday, again putting more balls in and just overall more solid, which is good. Warming up the serves, he followed pretty much the same pattern as the day before, serving some first serves to the tee and then some whites, doing the same with the kick serve. This time though, he would sometimes play the point. Daniel, this for you, man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Как тебе скорость кортов, кстати, здесь? Да вроде нормально. Да? Да, в дохе медленнее было, здесь вроде нормально. Тебе нравится быстро? Тренировочные два очень быстро. Очень быстро, да? 8,9? Да, они очень быстро. So now you know why Daniel keeps switching brackets during the training, and now that he's out of the frame again, he's ready to warm up the returns. 
as promised though i will show you just how far away from the baseline he stands and just how hard it is to return like him for the t-serve it's whatever arguably even easier but now look at the wide serves here check this out what He did something wrong in this return, as you can tell, so he corrected for the next one. Thank you very much. In the second round, Daniel was facing Alexander Bublik, another player that I absolutely love, and he actually took out Alexander Lazarov in the first round in like 25 minutes, winning the first uh, set 6-1, and then the other guy retiring, possibly because of the balls. Hashtag Daniel knows his shit. And although, as I said, I really like Bublik's game and him in general, this time watching this match, I was not with him. And honestly, it was a really awesome match to watch with a lot of funny moments and points. And as Daniel gets his underarm revenge on Bublik and seals the match, we are moving into the quarterfinals of the Dubai GT3 ATP 500. And I decided to split this video in two parts because it was just getting way too long. I hope you don't mind, but there's a lot of cool storytelling ahead. First of all, warming up Daniel before his match with Djokovic. Like, what? And then also finding out about his awesome and very relatable hobby, which is also cool and just a lot more. So stay tuned for part two. I really hope you've enjoyed part one of my Dubai experience and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте.